This is ESPN Esports. I'm Ardo Cal. Happy to be joined by the Rocket League Season 8 champion with NRG, Justin. Uh, my first question is how incredible does that sound after all that you and your team has been through? Now you're a champion. It feels honestly amazing. You know, we've put in so much hard work and dedication throughout the years. I've been on this team for two years. And for me, winning a world championship that early compared to like Garrett, who's been here for like four years now, is a crazy feeling. And I can't imagine how good Garrett is feeling right now. Yeah. Tell me uh, some of your emotions and, and even talking with Garrett as well. Of course, both of you winning your first championship with NRG, Turbo winning his fourth championship. But I mean, the look on your face when you won the championship and even when you were with the trophy, like just take us through your emotions. What were some of the thoughts that were popping into your head? I remember when Garrett uh, cleared the ball down to me and he just kept telling me that like, Scrub was the only defender back, and it was just like a wide open net. So I saw the ball, like I hit the ball going to the net, and I just couldn't believe it because I saw the ball past Scrub Killer, and I was like, did I just score like the game winning shot? And then, like, before it even went in, you could see me smiling. And if you look at like a side by side reaction between like me, Turbo, and Gary, I'm the first one to realize that holy, like, we actually won, like, before it even went in. And I, I just couldn't believe, like, I pulled off like two insane goals in that last game and I was like a really big like factor in why we won. Did you and uh, Garrett, ha wh what did you guys talk about afterwards when you got off stage, you're holding the trophy, you see your friends and family, did you and the team have a private moment? Like what, what did you guys share with each other? We all, I just kept telling Garrett like, I can't believe we won. Like <laughs> when we won Rocket League Summit, like that's my first LAN event and that would be Garrett's second. Uh, he was like, I can't believe we won like it's just crazy how far we've come as a team and we just like we had a press interview after and I just couldn't speak like I couldn't come up with any words to think because I was just so in shock that we just won the world champion. How much did you and Garrett talk about Turbo as a player before he joined the team? We talked about him a lot uh, after Fire you know announced his retirement. We we're definitely considering turbo you know considering he's a three time four time now but he's just such a good player you know on on land he's so calm he keeps the team intact and he's just a good person to have around when you're in a situation like that so when the signing uh, becomes official and you know that turbo is going to be your teammate take me through some of those first conversations like how hype are you and garrett and how much are you even thinking at that time because a lot of people were saying like i mean we talked to lawler a lot uh one of the great analysts for rocket league and he said you know this is the greatest team i've ever seen on paper so like how much of that were you feeling and how much of what were you guys thinking about in that moment as well we were super confident going in we knew that his turbo is just so good on land and he's just just good overall player online we were feeling so good during league play going into worlds um i remember we me and Garrett were talking like you know we we might have had a chance of fire you know fire is an amazing player no respect like no due respect but like turbo is just that all-around perfect player on land you know he's four time now three time at the time we picked him up but we were feeling super confident you know we had a lot of high hopes which put a little bit of pressure on us but that didn't really affect our play at all we just you know popped off you guys seem to click very well as well. Just talk about building that chemistry as a team. Uh, Garrett and I are mostly like offensive players, I feel like. Uh, same when Fire was on the team, Fire was more of a defensive player and Garrett and I would play up. I feel like we had that same transition over Turbo. Uh, he's, you know, that third man, the one who cleans up all the time. Garrett and I are always on offense. Uh, we didn't really have to switch play styles that much. It was just basically the same thing. I just feel like Turbo is just, like I said earlier, like just all-around better player and he has more experience in lands and definitely keeps us you know relaxed when we're playing on stage so you had a very successful season you fly to madrid uh every, all eyes are on you did you did you feel that did you feel like the spotlight was on nrg did you feel like did you feel any sort of pressure to win uh when you landed in madrid I definitely felt a lot of pressure, you know, because considering like G2 and Cloud9 and other teams weren't there, people were like, this is energy season. Like if they don't win this, then I don't know if they're ever going to win. And it was definitely like a lot of pressure, but Turbo there, you know, kept me calm, relaxed, and we ended up winning. What were some of the things that Turbo passed along? I mean, as you mentioned, he was at that point landing in Madrid, a three-time champion. So what were some of the things that he was saying uh, about, you know, even preparing for a world championship or even just, you know, thoughts and mental preparation? 
it was like if anything happens you know just move on you know if we lose one game reset you know don't get upset over one game we can always push through and you know take the whole series um we would talk about what we would do against specific teams before we played them like i remember the dignitas and vitality series the semifinals we were watching that and he was telling us if dignitas won this is what we would do against them if vitality won this is what we would do against them and he definitely helped us out with telling us what to do so now you're about to sit down best of seven series vitality the reigning champions are across from you this is your moment you're in the final and now the pressure is on right if it wasn't before now you sit down take me take me into that moment any last thoughts among you and your teammates uh what was the strategy going in how, how were you approaching the grand final we were feeling confident um after seeing vitality and dignitas you know it was a very shaky series at first Vitaly had the up on us because, you know, they played the series before us and they were already warm. We obviously had to wait for them and Dignitas to finish. Um, we were feeling super confident. Uh, like I said earlier, Turbo was like, if anything happens, just reset. We got this. We're the best team in the world. And we were feeling really good. Uh, I was a bit scared, though, uh, during Game 7 because I was like, oh, no, this is Season 5 all over again after the overtime. And I was like, I'm, I don't want to lose again. You know, we've come so far as a team and I'm... I'm not really trying to lose in the grand final in Game 7 overtime. I'm just so glad we pulled through and won the whole thing. You have a penchant for being clutch, though, scoring some clutch goals. And also, Turbo was on your side. So going into that Game 7 overtime, was there a little bit more confidence there when you looked over and you saw Turbo and you're like, well, at least he's on our side this time? Definitely. Um, like I said, Turbo's a three-time. You know, he's super an amazing player. Great person to be with on stage, on land. He's very relaxed, tells us what to do, you know. Keeps us in calm. Um, it was definitely, you know, a good feeling having him on my team, considering that we lost to him in season five. And I was feeling super confident because he's just such a well-rounded player. And I was really confident with him on defense and offense. And I was just ready for whatever he had to do. So you mentioned you were at a loss for words in the moment on stage after you won. But now having a couple days to look back on it, uh, just reflect on winning the championship and what it means for you and your teammates in your career. Every time I wake up the past two days, I check on Twitter just to check if it's real because it still <laughs> doesn't feel real. You know, I go through all the clips and I'm like, holy, I actually did that. And it's just a crazy feeling. I have people still messaging me like congratulations and all that. I actually have balloons in the background. I walked home yesterday. Uh, I got back from Madrid and I had balloons in my room waiting for me. I had cake, you know, congratulations. I had like Popeyes there. It was just an amazing feeling. What, one last question for you. I know that this is going to be a big topic in 2020 and I want to get your thoughts on it. Of course, uh, the big Intel tournament leading up to the Olympics, right? And there's always a conversation about esports in the Olympics. Uh, my opinion is that Rocket League is the best esports suited to introduce an Olympic audience to esport esports in general but i want to get your thoughts on this tournament and, and what the rocket league community in particular the top competitors feel about this being uh, adjacent to the olympics and in your opinion how important it is for rocket league to eventually become an olympic sport in the future i feel like this is a really big opportunity for rocket league you know it's a really easy game to follow along uh you know it's one out of the how many games at an olympics two i think it's i, I don't think know street fighter is the other one yeah um, I think it's just crazy, you know, out of every single game, it's Rocket League and Street Fighter, and that's just super huge. Um, it's just going to be insane, you know, all the teams competing, you know, I'm pretty sure it's like one from each country. So it's just going to be crazy seeing all these new like rosters being formed and all these people, you know, maybe some, who knows, like some random team will make it from whatever country and it would just, you know, Cinderella stories all around. I feel like it's just going to be an amazing opportunity for the Rocket League community in general.